Hey, Kid here, coming back uh, with another video. Uh, this time I want to talk about this um, something I've been working on for the past two weeks, and it is a uh, migration of the way that Onlook will work moving forward, and uh, it's a big breakaway from the patterns we've been using before. So I figured it's worth a video. Um, so I have Onlook open here and you will see that there's this new button that is stop and play and it opens up a terminal that you know it's just running the project so moving forward all onlook projects will be runnable through uh, this interface and the reason for that is um, we're um, we're adding a, an extra pre-build step and a cleanup step uh, after before and after running your project which allows us to do something like this which uh, is um, just like a very high performance um, update for Onlook uh, you'll see here that you know all the stuff I'm doing here if you were previously using Onlook you'd be like uh, that probably did not work very well so now you can see all the code uh, flipping around and moving hello it's changing all in real time very quickly and um, that is done thanks to this um, you might see here um, this data OID which is this kind of like tag that we add into all your templates at runtime and build time and you'll see here if I remove this tag she gets added back it's very performant and it allows us to keep track of um, the state of the DOM and the state of your code in a two-way binding that's like very reliable um, so uh, and this goes away when I hit stop you see that it's all clean up there um, and there's no trace of it and then when I run the project again this will add and the project will then uh, run again through onlook and um, so it is starting and compiling um, and this change uh, made me very nervous as an engineer to have kind of these, um, I would say, polluting your code base, but is it necessitates um, a few things. One is this big performance change update that you'll see that this is like quite performant, and the reason it's better than the previous method is previously we were. Um, going through kind of the whatever framework you're using, whether it's Next.js, whether it's something with Babel, and we were plugging into the build process. So we were maintaining a plugin for each of those kind of different process, uh, especially with Next.js. We, it's not backwards compatible that we have to, we'd have to maintain a 13, a 14, a 15, and moving forward as 15 is out. So this um, does away with all that and goes in and statically uh, add these IDs into your project. Obviously, this is the, a big trade-off and will turn out a lot of people. Um, that's um, okay. Um, I, I wish there was a better way, but this is actually like um, very good uh, because the other big um, boost here is that You'll see here, as I'm digging around the project, there's no um, Onlook uh, plugin that's being added. And if you look in the package JSON, there is no Onlook dependency. So this is just an XJS app that I'm just running and opening in Onlook, and it just works. So uh, a lot of the complaints we've had before were that people in other frameworks that we weren't supporting that were using React couldn't onboard very easily that yeah, there's this very complicated setup step that we had been progressively building out um, support for but it was just like we'd have to every time a new framework comes out we'd have to support that with this anything if your project has uh, GSX or TSX in it it will just work and uh, that's pretty um, that's pretty amazing in my opinion uh, and then if I stop uh, this project, it will you will just get your code back, no onlook ID, no extra dependency added, 
uh, nothing. It's as if you never used onlook, we, uh, um, we're just an IDE, and you get all your code that you've, you know, you've uh, created using onlook back, uh, no dependencies. So that is the draw. That is the big reason for the migration. There is no setup, and there is no tear down if you ever want to migrate away completely, completely your code um, at the cost of the IDs being there at uh, runtime. Um, and you can get rid of the IDs, and they will come back as you're running. And if you kind of copy and paste code, um, it will just automatically generate a new ID. So there's no concern. Like you, you can just treat them as if they're not there, and really they're kind of not. Like we, it, it's okay. You can do whatever you want with your code. If you paste in something new, it will automatically generate new IDs. You don't really have to interface with the with the IDs at all, except for the fact that they're there. So, um, the performance uh, gain from this is very, very significant. Like before, if we were, um, like if you were using on look before, you would be nervous about making changes like this because it would just kind of crap out. Um, that is no longer the case because of this two-way binding. So we're generating a mapping to these IDs as, um, as the files get changed. And these mappings are very consistent. The IDs don't go away. When they do, we can detect that and uh, update the mapping. And so you really get this like very consistent two-way binding, which uh, enables this really good performance. So um, enough about that. Um, that's kind of all I have to show. Um, I'll link the PR somewhere. And if you're interested in like how this works and the code, I might write up something. and. Um, of course, like link all the code that is uh, going on with this. But this is the way Onlook will work moving forward. And um, some people might not like it. Some people might. Um, it, I'm, I'm very excited to get this out. And just want to share how this works so that if I get hit by a bus, someone will know why we made this silly change. Okay. That's it. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Peace out.